All right, so we want to hit it far, but we want to be smooth and effortless while we're doing it. Well, I'm going to use a technique here to allow me to hit it really far, but really, really in control. Let's go ahead and give it a whirl. There we go. Nice, dead straight shot. Seven iron there, 199 yards. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do any better than that. That's about as good as I can hit a golf ball. Now, why is it that that looks smooth when I can hit another shot where I feel really jerky and it'll actually go shorter than that? So let me go ahead and try to do this one. <laughs> so I've topped it on that, but it's obviously very jerky. Everything's out of whack. Well, it's actually more effort on the second one, but the swing speed went way down. On the first one, I didn't see the miles per hour. I usually swing around the high 90s, maybe even 100 miles an hour with a seven iron. That was all the way down to 79 miles an hour, even though I felt like there was twice as much effort. Well, there's one technique to this. And what that is, is as I go into the transition, when I start to, start to shift my weight to the left, my hands will stay still as the club lags. So what we wanna feel like we're doing is in the back, into the backswing. We're gonna start out with little half swings here. I'm gonna swing back halfway. I'm gonna feel like there's no wrist set, meaning that when my hands are about chest high, my club is still pointing directly to the right. Then as I shift my weight to the left, my hands are gonna kinda of pause there as they start the downswing, and my club is gonna set back like this. So it looks something like this. Sounds complicated, but all it is is no wrist set. As I shift to the left, that's when I get my wrist set. So I can see no wrist set, shift to the left and get my wrist set. You'll also notice when I'm doing this, my right arm goes from extended to, it starts to tuck in toward my shirt seam, the side of my body here. And as that happens, this club starts to fold. So again, it looks something like this, shift, lag, and then swing on through. And that really smooths everything out and it allows that club to whip on through contact. So what I want you to do to feel this is just take it with your right hand here first, go back, very little wrist set with your wrist, very little bend with your right arm, and then let that tuck as you shift to the left and then swing on through. So I'm having a little bit of a momentum shift to the right and to the left in the golf swing. I go back as I shift to the left, then it starts to lag and comes on through. So let me just do a few swings like that. And you can see how this isn't complicated at all. It's just getting down the timing of having that lag and having that club just whip through contact. You see when I do it the other way and I pick the club up right away and then I wanna throw it, that's the exact opposite. During my weight shift, the club is doing this when it should be doing that. So that can really make all the difference in the world to being able to hit those smooth shots. So let me go ahead and hit another one and notice how in my transition, I'm gonna exaggerate like crazy here. It's gonna look like I'm playing this in slow motion. I'm not, I'm just swinging this smoothly. And I'll still get some decent distance out of this even swinging that slow. So let me go crazy slow on this one. Right, so the backswing was very smooth. It's that transition that really slows it down. And on that one, 170 yards with a seven iron. And you can see it looked like I was barely swinging at all. And that's all that lagging and then whipping it through contact, which is gonna allow you to be efficient with it and get that club to kind of take off through contact. So you're gonna do a few of those. And then I want you to go ahead and add in the last piece, which is getting long through contact. So I'm here, very little wrist set. I shift left as my wrist and my elbow bend. And then through, through contact, I'm very long here again. So it's almost like I'm letting the club lag and then I'm just letting it fly out to the target. Almost no effort at all. And again, very smooth, easy swing, almost like a little half swing here. And I'm still getting it, you know, that was 150 yards. I can get it very long even without trying at all. And if I wanna crank it up, now that once I get that moved down, I keep that same pattern, but I just go ahead and add a little bit of force to it. And that's when you can get the really crazy numbers with your seven iron or any of your clubs. And this works with every club from pitching wedge all the way up to the driver. So let's go ahead and try that out. There we go. Nice little draw, trying to come back 195 with a seven iron. So it's that transition move. Now there's one more thing I'd like to add to this. It's a video that I call knuckle dragger. And one of the problems that I find is people's positions, their body positions, the positions of their hands in their downswing are in an, in an orientation where you can't even do this. 
So if you were to do exactly what I talked about there, getting that little lag and that shift together, you may say, Clay, I'm trying to do that, but I can't even hit the ball when I'm doing it. It's something as simple as your hand position that can tie that together for you. And that's exactly what I go over, the feeling that you need to have to be able to get all that lag, to get that really late snap of speed through contact in a video I'm gonna play here in a second called Knuckle Dragger. So if you wanna see that full video, all you need to do is click one of the cards that pop up on the screen. If you don't see one of those cards, make sure that you go down to the link below in the description and click there. Either one of those will get you instant access to this video. It's like a light bulb goes off. Once you do that, it's easy to get lag, it's easy to get shaft lean, it's easy to clear the hips and do all these things that you wanna do. Your hands just were in the wrong position. So I'm gonna show that to you now. Let's go ahead and get started. I'll play a preview. Just click the card or the link down below. I got an awesome video for you. This one is what I call knuckle dragger. And this is one of the best ones, one of the big missing pieces to players that are struggling to get more lag. Now let's talk about when you lose lag, what's happening. A lot of times what's happening is as you make your downswing, if we're looking from this down the line view, what happens is my hips go toward the golf ball. They start to slide forward. My chest moves back away from this golf ball. So I'm getting farther away from the golf ball. And then all of a sudden I cast I flip and I don't have a lot of lag there. Well, look how far my hands are away from the ground. Also notice when I get my hands closer to the ground, so as my hands get lower, then what happens is they also go forward more. So as I wanna have more lag, when you feel like your knuckles are dragging the ground, then that club is naturally gonna lag back behind and then you're gonna release that out in front. When your hands are far away from the ground, well, if I had all that lag, where would I be swinging? I'd be swinging a foot over top of the golf ball. So you have to kind of flip, release that lag early to just make contact with the golf ball at all. So having those knuckles feeling like they're scraping the ground is really gonna be a big key. Now, another piece to this, again, when I talked about having, losing that posture, your hips go forward. You're gonna to wanna to feel like, as those hands scrape the ground, your knuckles drag the ground. 